CTJ's tax policy director, Michael Etlinger. Michael? Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> There's a lot of talk these days about uh, shifting government services from the federal government to state and local governments. As Bob said, it's called devolution. Um, now, whatever the impacts of these shifts on the quality of government services, for better or for worse, it's clear that it's going to mean a greater burden on state and local governments. And if there's a greater burden on state and local governments, it's inevitably going to mean more discussion of state and local taxes. The study we're releasing today takes a hard look at the job state and local governments are doing in the area of taxation. Underpinning the study is meticulous modeling of the tax systems of all 50 states. Bob said it took three years, and that's true that the immediate modeling effort took three years. But really, we have about 10 years of experience in the field, and this is the culmination of, of, of 10 years worth of work in, in some respects. What we found is that state and local tax systems are unfair. We found that middle and low income families are paying higher shares of their income in almost every state than wealthy families in state and local taxes. In fact, we found on average low income families pay 12.5% of their income in state and local taxes. Middle income families pay 9.8% and the wealthy pay 7.9%. These averages mask some wide differences among states. Some states, for example, have much higher uh, rates on poor families. Washington leads that list, the state of Washington, with a rate of 17.1% on low-income families. Those are families with an average incomes of around $18,000 a year. So that's a big bite for those people. Now, it's, it's hard to believe that anyone would design intentionally a tax system with the goal of taxing the poor the most and the wealthy the least. So how do we, what causes us, how do we get to this, this state of affairs? To some extent, it's 50 states and 50 different stories. Every state has its own exemptions, credits, special breaks, mix of taxes. Every state is different. But there are certain common policy choices that are driving our results. One way to see these most starkly is to look at the extremes. Look at the states with the most regressive taxes and look at the states with the least regressive taxes. First, we'll look at the states with the most regressive taxes. We found 10 states stood out as having extremely regressive taxes. Uh, they are Washington, Florida, Texas, South Dakota, Tennessee, Louisiana, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Alabama, and Michigan. The terrible 10. Uh, these states tax low-income families at two to four times as great a share of income as the wealthy, and tax middle-income families at one and a half to three times the rate of the wealthy. And the red bars on this chart uh, are, show the distribution of taxes in, in our terrible 10 group of states. Um, there are several things that these states have in common. For one thing, they all have general sales taxes. And in seven of these states, sales and excise taxes take, are a very high percentage of their tax system. They're disproportionately high relative the, to other states. Also, of the bunch, Louisiana is the only one with a typically progressive income tax. Five of these terrible 10 states have no personal income tax. Three have flat rate income taxes, and this might be a cautionary tale for those who would give us a flat tax on the federal level. And Alabama has only slightly graduated tax rates and has a deduction which greatly benefits the wealthy. So it ends up with a very flat or even slightly regressive uh, income tax. Now, what do we learn from this? Well, we know that sales and excise taxes are regressive. Middle and low income families have to spend uh, most of their income or all of their income just to survive or to maintain a, a reasonable standard of living. The wealthy can live quite well uh, while spending a relatively small percentage of, the, of their income. So by definition, these taxes on consumption, these sales and excise taxes, hit middle and low income families the hardest. Now, of course, most states have sales and excise taxes, but what stands out about the Terrible Ten is, A, they rely very heavily on these taxes compared to other states, and they have weak personal income taxes to offset the, the regressive distribution of the, of the consumption taxes. So in these states, we have middle and low income families paying substantial sales and excise taxes. Then by the nature of these taxes, wealthy families aren't paying much in sales and excise taxes. And 
In these states, because of the weak personal income taxes, they're also not paying much in personal income tax. So that's how we end up with such a very regressive tax structure. Now, if we turn our attention to the states with the least regressive tax systems, and there are four that, that stand out as being uh, better than the rest, and those are Delaware, California, Montana, and Vermont, um, it's not surprising that their tax structures are, in a number of ways, the mirror image of the terrible ten. They are states that have low reliance, or three of them have low reliance on sales and excise taxes. Those are Delaware, Montana, and Vermont. Delaware and Montana don't have any general sales tax. And three of them, California, Montana, and Vermont, have very progressive personal income taxes. I should note California's is getting less progressive. This study was done for 1995. 1996 law, they get rid of their top two rates. There's a ballot measure, a ballot initiative to restore those rates, so we'll see. But uh, as the law stands now, their, theirs gets somewhat less progressive this year. Um, but in these least regressive tax states, we have low regressive consumption taxes offset to the most, for the most part by very progressive personal income taxes. Now you may have noted, and we end up with a more balanced system that way. You may have noticed I haven't mentioned property taxes much here, and property taxes are certainly a, an important element in tax systems. Um, and they are regressive, but they are not as regressive as sales and excise taxes, and we found for the most part they weren't driving our results. Now that's not true in some states. New Hampshire comes to mind as a state where property taxes are most of the taxes. And New Hampshire, in fact, ends up with a very regressive tax structure because they rely exclusively on this regressive property tax and have no income tax to offset it. But New Hampshire is the exception. Uh, for instance, Louisiana is the one state we found with a progressive property tax, very slightly progressive because they have this, the first $75,000 of home value is exempt from tax there. So uh, it takes people who have enough money to have more expensive homes before they start paying real property taxes in most cases. And um, even though they have a progressive property tax, they end up on our terrible 10 list because they rely so heavily on sales and excise taxes. So again, the thing that seems to matter most is how heavily the, the reliance on sales and excise taxes is and uh, the nature of the personal income tax, whether it's progressive enough to offset those taxes. Now we've looked at the extremes. What about the states in between? And, you know, it's basically when you add it all up, you end up with all but a, the handful of states we mentioned having pretty regressive tax systems. They, the regressive taxes dominate. So middle and, and low income people end up paying more than the wealthy.